little bit about Aston Martin design in general, but specifically about 2012 Vanquish, which quite simply is the ultimate in terms of GT cars. It's our best Aston Martin thus far in terms of design and engineering, and that balance, as Ian talked about, of design and engineering. And Aston Martin is very much about its face. The grill of an Aston Martin is so iconic. It's something that we've owned and we've owned for many, many years. And all Aston Martins now and in the future will carry the face of an Aston Martin. It's vitally important to us. In the Vanquish, it's actually a masterpiece of engineering and design. This car conforms to all of the latest pedestrian impact legislation, but it's an all metal grill. So you imagine we have to conform within the crash, but we still produce extruded, then polished, bright aluminium grills on our cars. And again, we do that to reduce the amount of cut lines and shut lines that we have in our cars as well, to bring us back to that simple purity that is important for an Aston Martin. This is also a keystone. We call it our keystone from an engineering perspective, but as I say, it's our keystone in terms of setting up the front of the car, the proportions of the car. And it really, a lot of the lines are, are evolved from the grill, the curvature of the grill and some of the shapes within the grill. You'll notice the S shape that's just in here. We call it our S curve. Very, very unique. And it sets up many lines that run around the car. You'll notice it, again, influencing one here that I'll talk about later. This has an effect on the headlamp. So the grill is, is really setting up many of those lines and creating the shapes and forms that you see around the car. In this form, the grill actually has a much, much more, if you like, assertive stance to the front of it. It's the widest grill we've ever made as well. It's very, very um, pure in terms of its how much surface it takes up from the front of the car, and it's planting the car on the road. It's suggesting that the car is hugging the road. From a functional standpoint, we have an exposed carbon front splitter, which is there to create downforce, it's there to create the force that you need to drive the car around the, front of the corners, but it's there from an aesthetic perspective as well, in terms of highlighting the curvature. If you come and stand in front of the Vanquish after I've finished, you'll notice, you see the curvature because it's highlighted by these two points that oppose that curvature. So your eye reads the front form of the car far more. I talked about this line here, which comes from the grill. So important, as it really is, is a line that is consequent. An Aston Martin design has what we call consequent lines, which means lines have a meaning. They start somewhere and they finish somewhere. This line here comes all the way again through the grill, all the way up and over the car, back around through here as a softer highlight, back through here and all the way around the other side. And each line on Aston Martin, as you view it from any angle, you will see that it sits in perfect harmony, balance. And balance is so important for an Aston Martin. We create sculptures at Aston Martin, so they're living pieces of art, they're living pieces of design. They have to have a dynamic, they have to have motion, even when they're static. And that's so important for us. And how do we do that? Again, we use proportion, but we use the lines that, that I just mentioned. So this one, vitally important. This one from a side view, also important. And then there's the ground line, the line that sets the car onto the ground. It, it sets up the initial direction that the car has. The movement is important. When something is static, your eye wanders around it and you will, the eye is noticing the light fall over the shapes and forms and giving it that dynamic that I talk about. But our proportion is also setting up that dynamic. You'll notice the one-thirds to two-thirds relationship. The glass is more or less one-third to two-thirds the body height. So the total height of the car, you'll see the grill from the ground Again, one-thirds to two-thirds the height of the car off the ground. But how do we create that tension, that dynamic movement that the cars have? So you'll notice this line starts to fall backwards at a certain point. That, the point where it starts to arch backwards is exactly the point where this line ends. This line, the one that comes from the side strike, is forcing the car forward 
but has a little bit of a, a, a rise to it, an upward motion. So it's driving the car forwards and down. But that suggests imbalance. I don't walk like this. That would look like I'm about to fall over. So I have to have something to balance that. I and mean, if you think of a sprinter on the blocks, ready to move, they're in a position where they are crouched forward. You know their direction, but you know they're not going to fall backwards. But at some point, they will move forwards. This line is the sprinter's back. It's pulling this line back down to the ground. So it's giving you that balance between the two. And as I mentioned, the ground line really sets the car up and hugs the road. This part here, again, important line, all the way through here is one panel. Now that would be a massive part to produce in a steel or an aluminium. And we can do that in carbon fiber and it eliminates a gap. It eliminates another panel and it makes the car look as though it's made from the solid even more. But it's not just the panel size, it's the depth of this panel. Think about this, the draw depth that we have here and the sharp edges and corners that this piece has. You can only achieve that if you're using carbon fiber. I mentioned the depth of draw here because this area on an Aston Martin is vitally important for us visually. Our cars are rear wheel drive cars. They're driven by these fantastic huge wheels and tires at the back of the car. So that contact patch is really important from Ian's perspective and that dynamic perspective. It's the thing that drives the car forward and keeps you planted on the road. And from the visual perspective, I want to heighten that. I really want to show the power there, but I want the car to be nimble and agile visually also. We also use geometry, not just proportion, to give the car a sense of stability. One, what do I mean by that? If you look at this line here, this one here, and you extrapolate those lines upwards, you, you get a triangle effectively. And a triangle is very, very stable visually. So if you're following one of these cars, please look forward and have a look at the car when it's on the road. And you'll notice that triangulation. It's drawing your eye, again, down to that most important part, the contact patch on the tires. So again, visually drawing your eye down and forcing your eye down. Ian talked about the carbon fiber trunk lid, the boot lid, so important. This was one of those tasks that Dr. Bett set us in terms of producing something that was almost impossible to make. This is a one-piece outer without a single cut line or inserted part anywhere and a one-piece inner. So two parts produce this. You could, again, only do that in carbon fiber. And it was one of those, we, one of those objects or pieces that we really had to try harder and harder and harder to get into production without saying, oh, we'll do the obvious, we'll do something else. It was something that we, we wanted to make this piece work in, in, the, in the material that we did, and we succeeded. Very, very important. Anquish on the road, think about where the light is falling on that car. And you'll notice that underneath the spoiler, the lip, is where the light falls because it's coming through here and picking up a point back here. So visually, again, lowering where the light falls on the car. But it's also reducing the mass visually, because we've taken air through here. Imagine if this was a stood up wall of carbon fiber, the car at the rear would look much, much taller. So visually reducing the height of the car at the rear. <clears throat> Our wing is also very, very important. You all know the wing. It's generated from a scarab beetle very, very important for us, obviously something just like the grill that makes our cars unique. And again, with Aston Martin design, if you take the wings away, you will still recognize it as an Aston Martin. That's vitally important. But we use the wing to influence the design. The angle that you see in the middle of the rear, the rear lights, the tail lights, is exactly the same angle as the end of the wing. So it's generated from the wing. <coughs> so important. If you put these two lamps together, you actually get a little wing formed in the middle. But we also invert the grill. And if you look at the line at the base of the rear lamp, that's the S curve upside down. So again, the grill is influencing the car everywhere. The wings are influencing the car from a design perspective. But we also take it one step further. There's always more to see the more you look at an Aston Martin. If you think about the flutes on the inside of the wing, and then you look at the flutes on the inside of the lamp, these lines here, these light lines, they are, again, derived from the flutes on the wing. So a replication of the wing in the lamps. Technologically, 
they are the latest and greatest. Again, feel the surfaces and how they fit. But it's LED technology which allows us a much smaller package, which means we have a much larger boot, 60% larger than a DBS. So we're using technology not only to present the car in terms of the light appearance, but using it to create more space within the trunk of the car. Vanquish, we have improved the interior package. There is more space for taller gentlemen. There is a much more, much more storage, stowage space within the car. If you think about the center stowage here, in front of the center stowage, more usability, um, more effective stowage in the door pockets as well. So that addition of truthful materials, so real leathers, and we've improved the quality of our Lux Mill leathers as well. The stitch lines that you get, real glass switches. So when you press on a switch, the round switches in the car, it's real glass. And when you touch the center stack, it's a capacitive switch now. It's something that has a beautiful touch feel because it's real glass, but it also has a nice haptic feedback as well. There's a little buzz that you get, so you know you've hit the button. And it's very, very similar to the technology that we have on a smartphone. It's exactly the same in terms of the touch, the feel of a piece of glass. The aluminium in our cars, machined, honed aluminium dials. So again, truthful materials. Beautiful stitch lines throughout the whole of the car, something that we generated initially as a twin stitch, all done in the factory in Gaiden, so heightened craftsmanship within the car. And you will feel that and touch that as you drive the cars today. The other great thing about an Aston Martin is when you get inside, enjoy the smell of an Aston Martin. There is nothing like it. I mean, it's, again, a sign that you are surrounded by about seven cowhides, which is so important.